Hi, John Capobianco here, and I'm here to explore the world of table augmented generation. That's right, tag, T-A-G, tag. So we've come a long way in terms of just generic API access to retrieval augmented generation and RAG approaches to things like Raptor trees and knowledge graphs different approaches, but mainly focusing on that retrieval augmented generation approach. We've moved into agentic AI, and I would argue TAG is a mix of agentic AI with a th sort of thematic relationships to RAG, but a different approach. We don't need embeddings. We don't need vectors. We don't need a vector store. What we're going to do is try to improve on not just text to SQL, which has been around for a while, but letting the LLM agentically craft the query against a data set, execute the query, and then analyze the data from the response it itself generated. So it's AI all the way down. It's less than 200 lines of code. Anyone can do this. And I've decided to focus on packets again because we can transform a PCAP into a CSV, which we can use as a basis for a pandas data frame. So we're gonna be taking a packet, a PCAP, and turning it into a data frame and then interfacing with the data frame using natural language and this AI tag agent. This is pretty neat stuff. Now, the paper came out in late August, text to SQL is not enough, unifying AI and databases with tag. Um, you know, it talks about how text to SQL has some limitations, RAG has some limitations, they're proposing tag. Now, there's some nice articles about this on VentureBeat, there's a table augmented generation shows promise for complex data set querying and outperforms text to SQL. And then there's also this uh, member only article from Medium, which I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing yet because uh, it's um, locked. But they're talking about, um, you know, from rag to tag, exploring the power of table augmented generation, a leap beyond retrieval augmented generation. So here's a quick Excalibur draw, and let me get my pen out to annotate. So with the retrieval augmented generation approach, you need a source, and this can be basically anything. Uh, I've done YouTube, I've done GitHub repositories, PDFs, Word documents, PowerPoints, Excel, um, JSON payloads, almost anything you can think of as a source. We need the appropriate loader to load that data and then transform, you know, let's say this big document into small chunks of text, typically sentences in length, or if you're working with JSON, the, you know, the natural structure of JSON, it will break it down by the keys. But we need to transform that large document into small chunks, which then we need to do in embeddings. And an embedding here is a list of floating point numbers, you know, 0 0.114, and 0 0.682 or whatever. A list of floating point numbers that we take the chunks of text and turn them into math. Now, we need a model for this. This needs a model. You can do this in the cloud with an embeddings model from a cloud provider at a cost, or you can do it locally with an open source provider but you need a model to do these embeddings. The next thing is going to be a vector store. Imagine this is a spinning disk. Um, something like Chroma or uh, Postgres or Elastic or Mongo or you name it. Somewhere to store those embeddings. Finally, the LLM gets involved with a conversational retrieval chain to do a similarity search against the vector store and come back with the top K values that match similarity wise. And then we get the generated RAG 
augmented generation. Now with tag, there's a lot less moving parts. We have no need for the vector store. We don't need a model. We don't need embeddings. We don't need to transform anything. Our source is going to be tabular data. Think of it as a, a SQL database, tables, or a CSV file, or a pandas data frame in our case. So the user prompt comes in. This gets transformed by the LLM into a lookup against the data. So the LLM is here, acting agentically, coming up with the SQL or pandas query. It queries the data, and with the data that we get back, which is likely going to be a table of data, LLM again, or as part of that prompt, part of that agent, respond with the natural language as opposed to just the table. That's been my approach. Now, I don't have a SQL database per se, and what I thought we would do, I can explain the code my own way, and then we're gonna have ChatGPT help explain the code and without reading the readme file. So basically, right, we have some PCAP to CSV where we're gonna pick certain fields and make them the tabular data from the PCAP. We're gonna set up a chat completion client with OpenAI. Um, we're gonna load that CSV as a data frame and generate the query prompt. So this is important here. Generate a prompt to translate a user question into a structured query. Return the tab table schema is as follows, and we have that schema that we've already created up above as a schema. The table is stored in a variable named df, data frame. Convert the following question into a pandas data frame query. The user's prompt. Provide the query code only and do not include explanations. So that's what's going to happen. And then basically, here's our upload, right? The logic to upload the file. And then our front end here, where we're actually going to have the streamlit application. Now, in the conversational prompt, we're not quite done with prompting yet. Here's the query results based on the user's question and the results preview provide a concise and conversational summary of the data for the user, finally displaying that. And I have some sample PCAPs that people can use. So the Streamlit isn't perfect or pretty, but it is a functional working app. Now let's take this and paste it in here. And I'm going to say I am recording a YouTube video. Can you please explain the following code to the viewer regardless of their skill level. We're going to paste that in. And let's see what ChatGPT says um, describing this code. Welcome to the breakdown of this Python code for the YouTube viewers. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced coder, I'll guide you step by step and understand how this script works and what makes it exciting for analyzing PCAP files using AI. Let's dive in. Here's the overview. I'm not going to read all of this, but right, script provides a streamlit web application for analyzing PCAP files, it uses several technologies, streamlit, OpenAI GPT-4, pandas, T Shark, and some environment variables. You need to set up your environment with your ENV file and your open API key. Um, some key functions, querying ChatGPT4, converting the PCAP to CSV, processing and uploading the PCAPs, generating AI assisted queries, and then how to actually interact with the app. So let's give this a shot. I'm going to bring. All right, now let's give this a run. One thing I did adjust, just to be transparent here, in my follow-up query, I've done some prompt engineering here so that it understands that even though it has the data frame result after it's done its own query to get that data, that it is a PCAP analyzer. And here's some examples 
And here's some additional context. So just some, uh, a little bit more framework so that it, it knows that my questions are related to a packet capture. So if you get clone this, you need to make a .env file with your open AI API key, and then do Docker compose up, and then we can open it in the browser. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chat with this DHCP, so four packets in a DHCP flow, and let's say, what are the source and destination IP addresses? And we're gonna send that query. We can see that it, it, the LLM, has come back with a data frame query for IP source and IP destination, and we get the data frame back, the query results, with the source and destination IPs. Now here's our conversational response. Based on the provided data, we can see there's two types of traffic occurring. Packets being sent from IP address all zeros to the broadcast address, and packets being sent from IP address 01 to 0 0.10. And it gives us this whole breakdown. All right, so let's try port numbers, see if we get a different query. What port numbers are used in this packet capture? Again, from the DHCP packet. Now, this is a little more advanced. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it wants to add this dot unique. So let's try it again. And there we go. That's a little better. So maybe I can prompt tell it in the prompt not to use dot unique or something. But we do get the port numbers and we get this data frame uh, query to get the port numbers. And then it will dynamically know that it's DHCP traffic from these ports. Now, if I try something like, what can you tell me about this packet capture, a more general query, it's probably going to do a DF all. Let's try it again. And we have a DF describe. So DHCP, yeah, it's quite interesting as a table. So as we can see, this is, you know, natural language, which generates the data frame query, which then the AI executes, and then the AI converts the tabular response into human understandable packet analysis. So it's very early, but it's very promising. I, I do think it's interesting how our human prompt, it takes the structure of the table and knows how to make the data frame query. It makes the data frame query and then uses the tabular data that it came back with to help answer the prompt. Now I'm gonna do a little more prompt engineering in the second prompt and explain to the LLM that this is packet capture data and to be a network analyst and provide insights and whatever. I have a, I have a can prompt from the packet uh, buddy code that I'll move over. But uh, the code's on my GitHub repository. This is tag table augmented generation. And it's a whole new approach that has a lot less moving parts. So get started with your tables.